Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 99 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I have been doing a lot of stuff with bees. A lot. Uh, off camera, between last episode and this one, I've been breeding bees like crazy. Because I'm working, like I told you guys, towards being able to get diamond producing bees. That's one of the main reasons I started this whole process. But there's a ton of other things you can get from bees that are going to be useful and helpful for us. So, uh, with that in mind, I'm going ahead and working towards the diamond bees. So there's actually, you know, I think uh, there's two of them. The Diamandy Princess, which is, I believe, um, let's see, well, let's set this from Forestry, but I think that's the... The one from Magic Bees, but then there's also the Diamond Princess, which is Lapis and Imperial Bees. So these guys make diamond combs, which produce diamond fragments, right? So, uh, and diamond fragments make industrial diamonds. So there's really two paths I'm going. I'm going the Magic Bee route because I feel like that's going to be the one that's a little bit better for my purposes. It gives you a higher chance, I think, of getting diamond shards per time. And we're going to ramp this up a lot and hopefully get a ton of diamonds out of it. So let's see. Did you do what I wanted you to do? Frugal, frugal, frugal. Well, that's not good. That's not at all what I wanted. Uh, I'm thinking I didn't get anything. Oh, frugal, austere. Oh, maybe I did get something. Frugal, austere. Frugal, austere. All right, not terrible, actually. Um, I'm working right now towards austere bees so that's the current bee that I'm focusing on so I've uh, came here to the nether to because the main reason that I needed this was for diamond I needed to work my way up to austere bees and I'll show you why so austere is one of the traits that we need we also need auric which is a totally different line of bees but austere comes from modest and frugal uh, which is the one I currently have frugal uh, comes from modest and fiendish or sinister and the sinister one here is from modest and cultivated but these guys really kind of uh, have to be bred in the nether because it says right here when you mouse over this percentage it has a high chance of becoming a sinister queen but it has to be done in a nether like environment so either the nether itself or some other biome that's like the nether which is basically um, hellish temperatures and zero humidity so that's pretty much where we're at um, so I did a whole bunch of work getting these guys you know set up and right now I'm just kind of waiting for them to die off and hopefully get this austere purebred if I get an austere purebred I'm pretty well on my way towards getting the diamond and producing bees now like i said ooh, what did i get here a couple austeres cool um i'm not gonna really be focusing ah purebred austere come on purebred nice purebred austere that's what i wanted to see awesome so i totally lucked out with that um so we, let's throw these in guys in here and what i'll do is you know let these run for a little bit of time and uh you know get a couple extra drones and i'll feel really good about it so purebred austere huge huge um nice thing to have because it's going to give us a lot of bees that are going to be really helpful um so austere obviously leads to a lot of different bees Ooh, these guys are scary looking what do they make oh pyro bees oh you can make pyrothium dust nice <laughs> that's cool um all right so what am i doing right now waiting for these guys to die off once they do i'm gonna head back to my base and i actually also took care of getting a couple other types of bees that are going to help us with our logistics pipe bee organization system which is what we're going to work on today so today's episode all about using logistics pipes to route and sort your bees and do some really cool stuff with it uh and once we have that in place we're going to have a pretty efficient and awesome bee room uh, so I'll be back in a few minutes here. Now that I've got this austere queen, I am really quite happy. See you guys in a minute. All right, so the other big achievement I got was Imperial Drones. Uh, it took me a little while to get them, but I did work my way up towards the Imperial Drones, which was Majestic and Noble. Uh, majestic including Noble, Noble being common and cultivated. So that's the, similar to the um, Industrious Drones that you guys saw me get, uh, but basically the other line that you can get from mating common and cultivated together. Uh, the Imperial Drones are very nice because they give you royal jelly. This is going to open up your world to genetic manipulation, which we're going to get to maybe this episode, maybe next episode. Uh, like I said, this episode mainly focused on automating this whole process. So let's first off um, get rid of pretty much everything that exists right here. Uh, I want to get rid of all of this setup because right now, like, hey, it worked out great, but it's really, really inefficient and not at all uh, the way I want things to work out. So we're going to wind up just breaking everything down and making this as super efficient as possible. So let's get started, what do you say? Um, I might wanna make another apiary, but for now I guess we're okay. We're not even using all, all of them that we've got. 
Um, I did leave that one in the nether. I should have brought it back with me. Oh, well. Oh, and I had to place a cobblestone there because I was using some rocky drones at some point. And those guys require stone nearby as their flower type. All right, so what are we going to get? Oh, you know what? I totally left my frames back there, too. All right, I should totally get this thing back. Let's go nether. Besides, I had some cool stuff here. Some of the bees require cactus, and others require nether wart for their flowers, which is why I had one of each nearby. Kind of a good way to go about it. Uh, so hopefully a little bit of knowledge for you guys about how I managed to get to this point. But trust me, it's, it's a good thing it was mostly off camera, because it was just a lot of sitting there waiting for bees to produce and die and do their whole thing. All right, so let's do logistics pipes, shall we? So there's a couple types of bees that I'm gonna wanna, or a couple types of pipes that we're gonna wanna get going here. Let me put all this stuff away. Uh, these guys as well, and the stuff here. By the way, I have a neat idea for something that I wanna play with in the future that I'll show you in a minute. But let's get ourselves some logistics pipes. So I'm gonna mostly want um, some logistics chassis pipes, probably some basic logistics pipes. And let's also get some golden transport pipes, but I want a few more than what I currently have. That should be plenty though. Cool. Now the types of um, stuff that we're gonna to wanna to get is listed right here. So what are we looking at right here? Well, we've got a couple really cool modules that can go into our logistics chassis pipe. Uh, they're mostly these red ones down here. So we've got the B analyzer module. That's something that we're gonna to wanna to utilize. We've got the B sync module. We're also gonna want that. The apiary refiller module is pretty much your bread and butter of the system, and the drone terminus module, also very cool. So let's get started. The main one that I want to focus on right now is the apiary refiller module. This thing is cool, but it requires pollen, which is why I had to wait until I produced all those industrious bees that started working on making pollen for me before I could really start working on this. So it requires a little bit of honey inside a carpenter with a blank module, and uh, you're going to need pollen, propolis, and a wooden transport pipe, and some redstone while we're at it. So let's get that. So I'm going to need a pipe. So I should have wooden transport pipes. And we're going to need redstone. I'm just going to grab a stack of it. And we'll also grab some of our propolis. You can see we've been getting a lot. And pollen. It's been a while. You can see how much time I've spent working on these bees. Let me tell you guys. It's been a lot of work. Uh, carpenter with not seed oil, but honey. Cool. Uh, so these guys, or was it here? And redstone here, and this here, and this here? Nope, must have been the redstone down here and the propolis here. Ah, I kind of forget. Let's see, refiller. Redstone on the top of the propolis. All right, the last thing we're gonna need though is that card. So, did I never teach? No, that's not it. Blank module, that's it. I'm going to get a bunch of these because I'm going to need them for all kinds of stuff. That'll do for now. I can always get some more gold ingots in there or nuggets. Now, I think these go here. There we go. Now we're talking. Look at that. Cool. So we're definitely going to want a few of these. I don't know that they stack. If they do, great. If not, no biggie. All right, for now, I just need four, I think, to get started. Um, don't need any more than that at this point. And the other type of module we're going to want is, well, I'm definitely going to want to be analyzer module. So that's going to be an iron gear. Not even worth worrying about diamond or the chipset thing anymore, right? So again, we need this here, and I think it was something like this. Yeah, yeah there we go. Cool. B analyzer module. That's going to be nice. Um, you go in there. Cool. What else did I want? Um, drone terminus and B sync. I'm not going to worry about those right yet. Drone terminus? I'm thinking about it. I'm definitely thinking drone terminus might be cool. I'm thinking a couple purple dye. I don't even know if I want the drone terminus though or not. Because that's kind of like where drones go when you want them to go somewhere. We might get to that in a minute. But for now, the B analyzer module will suffice. Um, 
you shouldn't be doing any more work. Good. I don't want you to waste any of those resources because right now they're still a little bit low. The last thing I'm going to want is an analyzer. Uh, the analyzer is pretty much a machine or block form of this bealizer. Uh, the thing is, though, instead of using honey drops, it's going to use, you guessed it, liquid honey. Um, so we're going to need another analyzer because I just burned that up. And I think I had stuff in there, so it was probably a mistake, but tin, redstone, diamond, and glass. Tin, redstone, diamond. Oh, so low on diamonds. Forget it. I'm not even going to replace it. That's how low on diamonds I am. All right, so let's pick up the filing cabinets here that we've got. I'm going to move these guys here. Now, one thing I'm definitely going to want to have is this analyzer set up like so. And he his job is to take a bee that we don't know the traits of. So let's see if I have any of those. So here's an Imperial drone, right? Unknown genome. And we need to hook him up with some honey in order for this thing to process. It does not need power, which is good news. So let's get our liquid honey set up. And I should have some fluid ducts or something. Let's get these things running real quick. Let's go into that mode here. And let's see, how did I do this? This is the honey coming out of the AE system, right? So I kind of want to run this and snake it behind the wall here. And then we will sneak this into the corner here. This should be where this guy is hooked up at. Nice. I wouldn't mind kind of hiding this, so let's see if I can position the analyzer in such a way that it won't be so visible. There we go. That should look a little better at least. And of course I could put like a cover on it or something, but for now this will do. There we go. Honey goes in. Nice. And if we take a look at the interface here, we'll see that um, when we put the Imperial drone in, she goes in there and the honey starts to get used up and we'll analyze the bee. So that's an important thing. Um, and I'll tell you guys why it's gonna be important to have all our bees analyzed at some point in the near future. Uh, I don't wanna do it just yet though because I'm still a little bit low on liquid honey. Um, of course, I just burned a bunch of uh, honey drops, so that wasn't cool. But let's get our squeezer and throw another stack in there just so we can kind of fill up our honey reserves a little bit. So that should start filling this guy up with honey. Nice. That's cool. And you can see the Imperial drone is now analyzed. That's going to be important for us. So just trust me on that fact. So some of these guys are analyzed. Or no, wait, this is my not purebred chest. This is the purebred one. These guys, so like obviously a lot of them not analyzed yet. That will be useful nearly soon. So that's what the B analyzer module is going to be for. So let's get our system set up. So we're going to want a bunch of basic logistics chassis pipes. And they're going to be one, two three, four, and eventually we'll have this guy hooked up. Now I do need to connect power to these things, by the way, but I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, apiary refiller module. This is the best module for dealing with apiaries that you're gonna find. And I'll show you why in just a minute once we have something to do. So these guys are all set up. Let me get a power thing into here somehow, and we'll be right back. All right, so the next thing I'm doing is looping this thing probably right over to Maybe right here. I don't know if I want this to kind of be out a little bit. I'm thinking that should be good. And I've got an interface here. Um, and to that interface, I'm going to connect just a basic logistics pipe. And I can disable all this stuff. This was obviously set up from before. It's an interface I had earlier. Uh, this is going to connect to probably my yellow system. So. You know what, maybe I should have this guy over here. That might not be a terrible idea because I already have this kind of set up. So why reinvent the wheel, right? I'll run this over, oh, darn it. Run this over this way. So API refiller module goes there. And then we can just run this straight under here like this. Hopefully I can make grass facades. If not, I'll come up with something.
Done. Da -da -da. Cool. Now, will this guy share power? People are telling me that it can. I'm not entirely sure exactly how the rules of sharing power between AE and logistics pipes work. Maybe this shouldn't be a chassis. Maybe this should be that dude. Are these powered now? I don't think so. All right, let me get some power to this system. All right, now I thought there was some way that you could share power between an AE system and logistics place, but it doesn't seem to be the case. So I'm just gonna tap into my redstone energy line, which is right here anyway. And then things should light up green and we should be golden. Is that cool? Yeah, look at that. All right, so now we should be good to go. Now these guys aren't running just yet, so let's see why that might be the case. It might need to go on the back. Let's see if that's true. I'm gonna go ahead and just break these guys off for a moment just for the sake of fun. I thought they could work on any side, but I guess not. So let's tap into here, put the API refiller module in. And I'm gonna run the gold line back here. So you're gonna automatically refill or what? Oh, you know what, I wanna try something here. Let's see, if I take this drone out, will that make you behave? Nope. Now let's try it on this side. With the drone out, API refiller module. Maybe there's one more thing I have to do and make sure that there's a route for these guys on the system. That might be the problem too. Maybe make this the default route. Yes. There we go. Now things are happening. Look at that. Cool. So what should have happened now is we should have this guy. Nice. Tropical Queen. So what happens is the apiary refiller module all on one side. I'm going to try it from the bottom again. And hopefully we can actually see it happening this time. So let's try this from the bottom once more. We're going to put the apiary refiller module in here. And now when we hook this one up, what we should see happen is the princess will come out and it'll go right back into this slot. If there's no industrious in this slot, it'll use one of these and it'll pull all the items out as well. So it kind of is like one-stop shopping for all your items. So let's watch. Maybe it does have to be on the side then. Darn, I think it does. Not that that's the end of the world, but... Oh, wait, 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 there we go. It just ran. So it doesn't run constantly. It takes a few seconds sometimes. Every few seconds it'll check. But you see how it did one uh, industrious and one princess and then all the items and they all went to the default route? Nice. So that's the key there is make sure you have a default route. Otherwise, it just won't work. And you can see these guys flying down here. So we've got that tropical drone and that industrious drone at the moment. We're going to change it so that I don't think I want the drones in the ME terminal. I haven't really decided how I want that to work out yet, but that's cool. So this is one stop shop, automate all the things. So apiary refiller module, if there were any bees in there, it would actually do something. You guys as well, we'll put an apiary refiller module in there. Cool. And these guys should all kind of chug along pretty fast at the moment. Go on now. There we go. Cool. And I'll just grab these extra Imperial drones and move them out manually. So going forward, we won't have to deal with even knowing that they exist. Cool, right? So I just need one more Apiary refiller drone module thing, and then we'll be in good shape. So let's see. One more of those requires the wooden pipe here and that'll be good all right so i think if i did this what i'll get is a drone terminus module now the drone terminus module works like the terminus module does but for all types of drones meaning that anytime a drone enters the system he's going to prefer to follow and find this pipe instead of finding his way towards um, the the default route pipe so that's what we're gonna change up next. So let's just clear out some space here. I'm thinking I'll probably want this guy in a logistics pipe. 
right here. And since this is now an intersection, this should be a basic logistics pipe, right? And then we'll wind up with, um, since we're always going to have purebreds coming out of the system, I'm gonna go ahead and put the purebred filing cabinet right there. So that's all the purebred guys, right? Um, and I'll tidy up the floor here and make everything look nice again in a bit, I promise. But for now, uh, we put the drone terminus module here and what we should wind up with is any drones that come out of this system will pretty quickly cool. Let's go with, uh, we'll swap this out, proven frames with the necrotic frames just to prove it. So I'll be back in a minute when this bee dies and this is just going to be to test to make sure that the drones in fact go due to the uh, drone terminus module. So of course this all happened so fast that I didn't catch it, but uh, right now we've got 15 Imperial drones. You can see right there, this one is about to die. There it goes, and I have them disabled at the moment, so let's watch what happens. Put down the gold pipe, and the bee should make its way straight over to here. And we should see a little re request blip happen. There it goes, see the blip? And then the extra B went this way. Cool. And now we have 16 Imperial drones. So that's the drone terminus module. Now the only other one that we're going to want to check out is probably that B analyzer module. So if we put this guy right here, ouch, poison, and then we put the B analyzer module in here, what this does is any B entering the system, okay, that, um, is not currently analyzed will make its way here. Any bee that is analyzed will now make it here because of the drone terminus. So this one has a higher priority, the bee analyzer module, than the drone terminus module, but only for non-analyzed bees. So let's go ahead and see what happens in a moment here when this one dies off yet again. Dun, dun, dun. There we go. And if we check, we should see this Imperial drone sitting here getting analyzed. So because we set up the B analyzer module, he's gonna get analyzed automatically now, and that's cool. Now the next setting in here is extract mode on. That's good because it'll mean it'll automatically extract this Imperial drone when it's done being analyzed. Typically with the analyzer, you need like all kinds of sides and pipes and everything. This makes it a lot easier. If we keep an eye on it here, what we should see is this drone get pulled out pretty quickly um, let's see, so there he is hanging out. He just got pulled out and made its way into here. Cool. So now we've got this, um, you know, it's one of the ones that probably just got analyzed. I don't know, one of these, maybe this one, probably. That would be my guess. Pretty cool, right? So that is full-blown automation of all the B routing stuff. Now, the only other uh, B module that I didn't show you from Logistics Pipes is the B Sync module, and we'll take a look at that one in a bit. But what we should wind up with now is um, all our drones, will now make their way into the filing cabinet, which I might replace with something else, we'll see. I haven't fully figured out how I want that to work. Maybe I'll make that like a ME chest or something. That would be kind of cool. I mean, there's a lot of ways I could do it, obviously, but um, so for now, the filing cabinet function works, but we're not gonna be keeping these bees around too long because pretty soon we're gonna be doing something a little bit different with them. For now, let me see if I can get some grass. All right, good, I have a few grass blocks. That's cool. And let me get my saw, do I have one in here? Awesome. Let me get some covers and see how much luck I can have. There we go. And then I'm also going to want some structure pipes. Wonder if I can get myself, not those, um, facades. Yeah, I don't know if there's a grass facade. Um, facade origin grass. Hmm. I don't think there's a vanilla grass. What's origin grass? It's a biomes of plenty type. Hmm. That might not be easy. No recipe for it. All right. So I might not be able to do facades. I can do covers. I just want to see if I put a cover down, will it actually look like grass on the top? Oh, that's cool. Unfortunately, covers aren't going to really work. I mean, they kind of work, but I mean, they're also kind of not going to work. Hmm. All right, I'll come up with something to make this look good. If I have to rerun everything underneath or something, that wouldn't be the end of the world. I mean, that doesn't look terrible, actually. You can barely tell that there's a cover there instead of... Let's look at it with one more, a couple more grass blocks, please. Oh, 
Yeah, I mean, it's a little noticeable. Yeah. All right, I'm going to have to figure something out. Might have to run that a little bit lower. We'll be back. All right, guys, there's one thing I want to do before we wrap up here. And I'm taking a break from the bees for a minute so I can work on this. I would like to set up this import bus. And I don't think we need you anymore. So you can go fall into the void if I don't really care. Uh, let's also get some bricks here to cover this up. What I'm thinking is I'd like to make a little bit of end stone, and I'll tell you guys why next episode. But for now, uh, this guy is going to filter out only uh, end stone here. And let's also snag this basin and replace him. One of the downsides to having multiple basins is that you wind up with them kind of having a surplus of that liquid glass in there, and that's usually a problem. So let's install on this dude um, some obsidian. To get this, uh, we're also going to want to disable these for the time being. Well, actually, you know what? We don't need to disable them because it won't allow multiple liquids into the basin, I don't think. Let's see what happens here. Um, and what do we have to cook up? Endstone. So liquid ender in the smeltery plus obsidian in the basin should wind up making us endstone. Uh, now, I've not been to the end yet, I don't think. Um, and I really don't want to go mess with those endermen too much because I know that they're going to be a bit of a nuisance if I go there bothering them. So I kind of want to avoid it. So that's why I'm using uh, some of my resonant ender, uh, which you can see you get by melting down um, this stuff in a smeltery. You wind up with 250 millibuckets per ender pearl. And I'm going to wind up with, um, it takes 50 millibuckets. So I'll get five end stone per resonant ender, per ender pearl. And I've got 16 in there. So that's like what, 80? cool so that should be cool um, I could I could work with that so we'll let that cook off I'll get about 80 end stone out of this operation I've got a little bit more obsidian than I need in there but that's okay and then um, we'll have some end stone for a secret project that I'm gonna save for next episode probably I'm gonna want to work on that project a little bit as well as wrapping up the bees so uh, well maybe not totally wrapping them up but at least getting to the point uh, Probably a lot of next episode will be genetic manipulation with extra bees because uh, you can really adjust the traits of your bees and allow for much better stuff. And we're going to want to implement that because it's going to allow us to have uh, more production from each of our bee species. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, right, cultivated bees have high production rate and these guys probably have low or slow or something like that. So if we can manipulate those traits, then we can have bees that produce a lot of cool stuff uh, a lot faster too. All right, so this thing should really be kind of just dumping into here except it's not all right probably because i have a filter on this dude right yeah okay so let's remove the uh filter for now we don't really need him at the moment and you can see there so the ender is not allowed into these casting basins because they still have glass in them and this guy's getting ender stone and we put a filter on there so it only pulls end stone out and it doesn't pull the obsidian out Neat trick, right? So we'll be back next episode. Uh, we'll focus on the end bees, uh, or the, the end of uh, extra bees, those end machines there that'll really help us out. I will kind of tidy this up a little bit, uh, but right now we have a really efficient automatic routing system for all our bees to operate in, which I'm happy about, because it means that I don't have to worry about them. I can just leave them there now, and they'll all just continue to process without me touching them. Obviously, the frames need to be replaced every now and then, but we're gonna get to a point where that's not even necessary anymore. That will be cool. All right, guys, for now, Darwell20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.